In this screencast, we will discuss the imaging evaluation of headache. Much of this information is taken from the ACR appropriateness criteria document on headache. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to describe when imaging should or should not be ordered for headache, and describe the different roles of CT and MR imaging when evaluating a patient with headache. We'll start by describing when imaging is not warranted. We'll then look at common scenarios when an MRI should be ordered to evaluate headache. And then we will discuss the scenarios when a CT is more appropriate. Let's look at a little background on headache. So there's a wide range of estimated lifetime prevalence of headache, but uh, some people think that headache is going to affect 80 to 85 percent of people at some point over their lifetime. The most common headache encountered in clinical practice is going to be a non-traumatic headache without any focal neurologic symptoms. And it's been shown in multiple different studies and meta-analyses that imaging of a non-traumatic headache without focal neurologic symptoms has a very low yield. In addition to having a low yield, there is a high cost associated with imaging these headaches because MRI in particular can have a high false positive rate that results in additional medical evaluation and imaging evaluation. So let's talk about when you do not need to image a headache. So isolated headache that does not occur after trauma and the neurologic exam is normal, or a chronic headache that has similar symptoms to the prior headache and there's no new or focal neurologic findings. And this sort of applies to migraines because migraines can often have many neurologic symptoms may even have neurologic findings, but if the patient has a history of migraines and the neurologic findings or symptoms are similar to on prior episodes of a migraine, then imaging is not warranted. Here we have an example of a head CT that was ordered in a person presenting with migraine. They had no focal neurologic symptoms, and as would be expected, the head CT was normal. So when do we need to image and when should we use MRI versus CT? Well, MRI is probably the better modality for evaluating most headaches, particularly headaches that show a focal neurologic deficit. So if you have a patient that comes in with a new or a chronic headache and there's some focal neurologic deficit or a localizable neurologic symptom or sign, or there's papilledema, then MRI is usually warranted. Patients who have cluster headaches or severe pain in a trigeminal nerve distribution also warrant MR imaging to rule out any secondary causes of the cluster headache or trigeminal pain. MRI is also useful when there are conditions in the patient's history that would predispose them to serious neurologic problems. So people who are immunocompromised may be more susceptible to opportunistic infections. Patients with drug use or drug abuse may have endocarditis or be at risk for atypical infections, stroke, and encephalitis or meningitis. And patients with a cancer history, you may be able to detect masses or metastases. So new headaches in these groups of people warrant MR imaging, but often a non-contrast CT is performed before the MRI as a quick and easy screening examination. In patients with suspected neurologic infection like meningitis or encephalitis, or in patients who have altered consciousness or behavior, some sort of neurologic imaging is warranted. Again, MRI is indicated and should be obtained, but often a non-contrast CT is obtained prior to the MRI, although that is not necessary. It is recommended that patients who present with skull-based pain, orbital or periorbital pain, get some form of neuroimaging, and oftentimes you're going to be ordering an MRI of the orbits or an MRI of the face when you have some sort of skull base or orbital abnormality. Other instances in which MRI is indicated 
are listed here. So patients who you suspect have giant cell arteritis or temporal arteritis do warrant MRI imaging. And so that's elderly patients. They may have temporal pain, point tenderness, and an elevated SED rate. There have been studies that show that headache that is exacerbated by or associated with cough, exertion, or sex also warrant imaging because in certain people there are intracranial abnormalities that result in a secondary headache as opposed to a primary headache syndrome. Pregnant women also warrant MRI imaging in the setting of a new headache and that is because there's a high incidence of abnormality in women often due to the hypercoagulability of women and in this image on the right hand side of your screen you can see an MR venogram evaluating the dural venous sinuses in a pregnant woman who had an acute onset of severe headache and this is used to rule out venous sinus thrombosis or venous infarctions now let's talk a little bit about when to use CT CT is certainly the workhorse in the setting of trauma and that's because a non-contrast CT has very high sensitivity and specificity for subarachnoid hemorrhage so patients who have trauma we really want to be able to detect blood in the brain whether that's subarachnoid hemorrhage or epidural or subdural hemorrhage a non-con CT is your modality of choice we also will commonly use CT when someone comes in with the worst headache of their life or an abrupt onset headache a thunderclap headache that classic scenario in which you're concerned the patient has subarachnoid hemorrhage due to a ruptured aneurysm you often start with a non-contrast head CT and then you move on to a CTA of the head and neck sometimes these are ordered concomitantly but certainly someone who's coming in with a new headache but it's not extremely severe may not warrant imaging but these extremely severe abrupt onset headaches may warrant at least a non-contrast head CT to rule out subarachnoid hemorrhage CT is often used prior to lumbar puncture in patients who suspect meningitis and that is to make sure there isn't any mass in the brain or other reason that may predispose the person to transtentorial or transforaminal herniation when you lower the CSF pressure by obtaining a lumbar puncture. You also want to get a CTA in patients who come in with unilateral headache and Horner syndrome. And that's because in young patients who are presenting with a unilateral headache or Horner syndrome, vertebral artery dissection is a primary consideration that you want to make sure you've ruled out. CT is often very beneficial in patients who have sinusitis related headache that persists despite appropriate therapy. In the example on the right hand side of the screen, we have a 12 year old boy. He came in with headache, fever, and leukocytosis and sinus symptoms. He was given antibiotics and his fever persisted despite appropriate antibiotic therapy. Eventually a head CT was obtained and a brain MRI was obtained and these showed severe sinusitis that resulted in cavernous sinus thrombosis. When making decisions about what forms of advanced imaging to use, I recommend that you turn to the ACR appropriateness criteria. It's a very robust resource. It addresses almost every clinical scenario you will face. It provides you with very clear, easy to read ratings about which studies are or are not indicated. And it even gives you a really nice literature summary to help you make your decisions and give you some background information on the etiology or on the pathology that you think your patient has. In summary, primary headache syndromes can be diagnosed with history, physical, and neurologic examination. So mild to moderate headaches with no focal neurologic signs or symptoms can often just be diagnosed with history and physical and do not need imaging. If you have new focal neurologic symptoms, 
in the setting of migraine or in any headache, you will typically need a CT or an MRI. An MRI is usually the best study because of its sensitivity and specificity. There are many different specific scenarios or patient conditions that predispose to severe neurologic problems and people who present in a headache with those predisposing conditions should get an MRI. Examples are listed there like pregnancy, immunocompromised, or known primary malignancy. And an interesting category is this category of headaches associated with cough, exertion, or sexual activity. And some studies have shown a higher incidence of intracranial pathology causing a secondary headache when they are associated with these activities. Thank you for your time.